Welcome to the Open 3D Engine YouTube channel. I'm Alex Demarjan, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. I'm guessing you're here because you heard a little bit about O3DE and you're wondering what the first steps are in getting it up and running. Well, wait no further. In this video, we'll walk you through the steps in configuring your credentials, forking and cloning the O3DE GitHub repo, and how to build and register the engine. These are all important steps in setting up your development environment so you can easily sync future engine updates and make contributions to the open source project base. One last point before we begin, and this is in consideration for the open source nature of O3DE. The O3DE community is constantly making important updates to the engine, so make sure to check the description below for any updated content or videos. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Written instructions on various aspects of O3DE, like how to download and install O3DE from GitHub can be found at the following link. At the top of the page, select Get Started. This page provides helpful information on how to get Open3D Engine up and running. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the page. Before we begin, it's helpful to understand what the O3DE system's requirements are. You can find that information at the following link. On this page, you can see the hardware requirements also, some of the software prerequisites. Make sure that you have all of these software prerequisites covered before proceeding with this video. Let's go back to the Getting Started section. Click on the Get Started link again at the top of the page. Next, let's click the Set Up O3DE link. Then, click on Set Up O3DE from GitHub. This video is essentially a visual representation of the contents on this page. For the remainder of the video, I'll be showing you how to set up O3DE using the command line. Feel free to refer back to this page if you need additional support. Next, let's create a folder inside of our C drive. Once created, make sure to name it O3DE. Now, we want to navigate our command prompt into this folder. A trick I like to use is to go inside of the folder, up in the menu bar, I click once so that it's all selected, and I type CMD. After pressing enter, you'll see that you'll have a command prompt that opens within this folder. Let's configure credentials for Git LFS. The following instructions will prepare your PC to authenticate and download these files automatically when you clone, fetch, or pull from your repo. So let's go ahead and configure our Git LFS. We do that by typing Git LFS install. After running this command, the output from this command should read git lfs initialized. If that's the case, then you already have it initialized. Let's take a look at what it looks like after we install it. Here you can see we got the git lfs initialized output. Now let's verify that we have a credential manager set up for git. Recent versions of git install a credential manager to store your credentials so that you don't have to enter them for every request, which is going to be important when you're pulling and pushing to the specific repositories that you'll be using for O3DE. Let's take a look at that command. Now if you don't receive any sort of output for your git credential manager, you can go to the following link to install the git credential manager core. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page, You'll find the various installers for Windows, Macs, and Linux. You'll find the download and install section. I'm on a PC, so I'm going to scroll down to the Windows section, and you'll find a link where it says Latest Installer. Go ahead and click on that, scroll down, and then select the installer that's correct for your system. Next, we have to generate a personal access token, which we'll use in the next step as our password. You can find this page by visiting the following link and signing into your GitHub account. Go to the right-hand corner and select Generate New Token. Under the Notes section, I'm going to just name mine O3DE. Under Select Scopes at the bottom, you want to turn on Repo for All Access. Then under the Admin colon Org section, do Read colon Org. Down at the bottom, let's go ahead and select Generate Token. After clicking a Generate Token button, a personal access token will be created for you. Mine is blurred out, but keep note of this page and have it handy because we're going to be using it in a little bit. After generating our token, we need to fork and clone our repo. All contributions to the O3DE repo are expected to be staged in a fork before submitting a pull request. If you need additional information on how to contribute to the O3DE code resources, check out the documentation on our site. To create a fork of the O3D GitHub repo, visit the following page. In the top right corner, you'll see a fork button. Click on the fork button. A prompt will appear asking you where you'd like to fork O3DE. Go ahead and click on your name. This will fork O3DE under your name. So now let's go ahead and clone our repo into the folder that we created earlier on our C drive. 
Click the green code button. Then I'm gonna select the little clipboard copy icon to select my URL for my GitHub repo. Open the command prompt to the O3DE folder we created on your C drive earlier. Now executing the git command git clone followed by the link that we just copied from GitHub will copy the engine files into our O3DE folder. Notice that after running the command, we're prompted to sign in with our personal access token. This is the one we generated a few moments ago. So back on our site, I'm going to go ahead and click the copy button. Let's paste that in here and click sign in. Here you can see it's begun cloning. This can take a little bit of time because we're pulling down lots of data. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and start it up again once this is complete. Take special note that in my particular example, after running my clone command, the engine O3DE files were created within my master O3DE folder. For me, I like to have my engine, project file, and third-party packages in one master O3DE folder. If you're following along with me in my example, change directories to the O3DE engine directory located within your master O3DE folder. Here you'll find your clone operation files. Now that the clone operation is complete, verify that you have all of the files from the LFS endpoint. You should no longer receive credential prompts. We do this by running the git lfs pull command. Here you can see that no new files were pulled down, so we are currently up to date. Now let's add a remote track to the upstream repo. This will enable us to pull updates from the O3DE repo directly into our local clone. We do this with the following command. Next, let's verify that the upstream repository has been connected. This is done with the get remote dash v command. You should see the URL for the fork as an origin and the URL for the original repository as the upstream. Anytime that you want to sync the latest files from the repo and LFS, you can merge changes from the upstream branch you're working with. We use get fetch upstream for this. You can use the get switch command to create your local working branch and set it to track the upstream of the development branch. Now, for the sake of clarity, whenever you set up to track an upstream branch, you can always use the get pull command whenever you wanna sync the latest changes from upstream. Here you can see, after running it, it's signifying that we're already up to date, which we should be since we just pulled. Now that we have a local copy of the O3DE source, you can build the engine, including key tools such as the O3DE asset processor, editor, and project manager. Let's create a project directory in a writable location. This directory will be used by the O3DE package downloader to retrieve external libraries needed for the engine. So outside of my O3DE folder here, I'm gonna create a third-party packages folder. Let's open a command prompt to the directory where we set up O3DE and run the get Python script. This can be found within the O3DE engine folder, Python, and you can see here we have our get python scripts. Let's go ahead and run our get underscore python that bat file. This will load all of the necessary packages that you need. This may take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and let it finish downloading the packages. Once the package files have completed downloading, let's go ahead and switch to our O3DE engine directory. Now we'll use CMake to create the Visual Studio project for the engine. Start by supplying the build directory. This is located within our O3DE engine folder. Then the Visual Studio generator, the path to the packages directory that you created, and any other project options. Paths can be absolute or relative. Alternatively, you can use the CMake GUI to complete this step. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about that process, please see the developer overview video by Royal O'Brien. In the following example, we're going to include the automated testing project as an option. The reason for this is if you plan on contributing changes to the engine source, you should use this project to run automated testing locally before submitting a pull request in GitHub. Furthermore, running this command will download all of the third-party packages that we need into the O3DE packages folder. This step can take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video and then we'll return once it's done. We know the process has been completed correctly because you should see a configurating done, generating done, and build files have been written to with the proper directory. Next, let's take a look at how to build the engine. We're going to use CMake to build the test project, engine, and tools. When specifying the editor as the build target, the asset processor and project manager will be built too, since these are the dependencies of the editor. The profile build configuration is shown in this example. Again, this could take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video as this builds out. Now that the build is complete, the tools can be found in the following folder. O3DE build Windows version 2019 bin profile. Next, we need to register the engine. Registering the O3DE engine enables O3DE projects to find the engine. 
even when they exist in a different location on your computer. The registration process creates or updates the O3DE manifest file in your directory. Use the O3DE registration command seen here. Let's double check that the engine has been registered by going to your user directory .o3de folder, then double clicking the O3DE underscore manifest.json file found within it. For me, this is found under C users, my username within the .o3de folder. Here we find the O3DE underscore manifest.json file. After opening this file, we can see that the engine has been registered underneath the engine's path. This completes the setup process for our engine. In this video, we took a look at how to fork, clone, build, and register O3DE. Stay tuned for future videos. We'll explore more O3D related content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.